More and more podcasters are moving to remote recording with their guests and their co-hosts. Why not take advantage of your remote recording software and record high quality video at the same time so that you can also have your podcast on YouTube? This can be a lot easier said than done. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the best podcast video remote recording solution that I've found so far. Hey, welcome to the Pod Sound School where we help podcasters make something big with their podcast. I'm Studio Steve, I'm a podcast producer and an audio engineer, and today we're gonna talk about Riverside FM. Riverside is this new software that I have been introduced to, or a solution, you could call it, that helps to record our podcast remotely. Not only do they record really high quality audio, but they also record really high quality video. In fact, they can support up to 4K video. There are many great recording solutions out there that attempt to do what's called a double ender, or to record locally on each person's machine, meaning that it's gonna record the video and the audio from my computer first, and then it will upload it to the internet to share. And it does that with each participant in the video or in the podcast episode. So let's pop into Riverside real quick and take a look at what it looks like. And then I'm actually going to send the invite link to Veronica and we're gonna join a Riverside podcast session and we're gonna put it to the test. We're gonna run some USB microphones into each one of our computers. I'm gonna have the Canon M50, which is a 4K camera plugged directly into my computer and use that. And we're gonna do a little mock podcast episode and see what kind of video quality and audio quality we get from Riverside FM. So let's jump into it. But before we do, please remember to hit subscribe here on our channel and don't forget to comment with any ideas you have or let us know if you liked this video. We love responding to our podskis here on YouTube and we'd love to get to know more about you and your project. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in the dashboard of riverside.fm. It's very easy to use, very straightforward, only a couple buttons you have to press to get going. And the first button you press is new podcast. So I will click on that. And here I'm gonna type this in interview with Veronica. And then here I'm able to enable live call-ins. You can have people actually call in to your podcast, which is awesome. And you can also record separate HD video tracks, which is what we're gonna do with this and put this to the test. Then I say, create podcast. I love that it gives you these messages here. This is what's called a green room. And the green room allows you to sort of check your camera to make sure you're using the right camera. And you can also check to make sure that you're using the right microphone. So here you can see I'm using the Samsung Q2U microphone. I can check my level. That looks like really good level. And my speakers are the going to my audio capture. Those are the speakers that I wanna use for this as well. So now I can go ahead and join session if all of these settings are great. Here it also tells you that you wanna make sure to use the Chrome browser. Google Chrome browser is the only place right now that Riverside is hosted on. And then we'll say join session. Now I am in the session and I'm just waiting for Veronica to join. Right here it says the recordings look and sound much better than what you see live. So in order for Riverside to keep you connected, you will see the video quality kind of get pixelated sometimes, or maybe the audio will sound a little internet-y, but that's not how your final recordings are gonna sound, which is really cool. So now I can just copy this link and drop down into a text message and text it to Veronica. You can also email the link, however you wanna give anybody this link. Hey, Veronica, how's it going? Hello, hello. So here we are in Riverside FM. Veronica's connected with me very easily. Um, so all we have to do really, and I also showed you, Veronica gets that same thing. She gets a green room as well, where she's able to check her camera, check what microphone she's using and the level of the microphone mm -hmm. and everything. And she's got her microphone all set up and it's best if you could really get your guest and your co-host to use a good microphone, USB microphone. And we always want to wear headphones as well. And then once we're ready, we just say record here and it gives both of us a countdown. So you can see my my screen here, but Veronica also sees this three, two, one countdown. And now mm -hmm. the guest and the host both know that it's recording. So here we would be in the midst of an awesome podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where, this is where as a host, if I was really prepared, I would bust into the podcast intro. Veronica, if I were to jump in with an intro for my podcast, I might also need to record a separate intro for my YouTube video, right? So basically what you want to do is that you want to record two intros, one for your video and one for your podcast. Your podcast intro is going to include the normal things like your elevator pitch, uh, the episode summary and the call to action. An elevator pitch is a sentence or two saying what your podcast is about. 
the episode summary is what you're going to cover uh, in that episode. And the call to action is subscribe to my podcast, share my podcast, tag me on social media. Okay, so that makes sense. So I would either at the first of the session here with you or the end, I would say, okay, and now would, would you mind helping me to record an intro for the YouTube channel too? Let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the differences between a podcast episode and a YouTube video and some of the best practices. What do you think the best practices are for a YouTube video? now that we're going to be sharing our faces and not just our microphones. You may be wondering, why can I just post the entire interview or the, or the entire episode to YouTube and not to do anything or not to say anything, just the entire episode? Your YouTube audience is going to be a little bit different than your podcast audience. They're used to listen to entire episodes, can multitask while you're listening to a podcast. But when you're watching videos, you want to find the answer very quick and you want to know from the get-go what the video is going to provide for you. There is a lot to cover when it comes to YouTube videos, but mainly you want to pay attention to three things. The first one is the setup. The second one is the performance. And the third one is the structure of your video. Yeah, so really just with the setup, you're looking at things as far as where your camera is pointing. Um, and that's like with your guest, if they have a laptop camera and it's pointing up at their chin and you can see their ceiling, you know, you can take some time to look at what's behind you, what's in the background, but then also look at some lighting. Getting a ring light is what we like to use. They're very inexpensive. Or you can even sit in front of an open window if it's daylight and let that natural daylight come and hit your face. You want to have some lighting that's going to be flattering on both you and on your guest. And then number two is performance. Your performance is very important when it comes to YouTube videos. You want to make sure that you're talking to the camera, directly to the camera, that you're transmitting that confidence and and also, you know, make sure that your hair is done, that if you're a woman, that your makeup is done. And they're just, just like wearing those things that make you feel uh, good about yourself and super confident. And that is going to show. It's going to show in your video and you're going to provide a better experience for the, the person that you're interviewing, a better experience for your viewers too. Mm -hmm. And it can take some practice and you just got to put yourself out there and get and get embarrassed, get nervous, you know, and challenge yourself. It's a fun new challenge. It doesn't doesn't matter what you think you might look like or whether you're insecure about who what you look like in front of a camera. You're unique. You're beautiful the way you are. You just need to get out there in front of the camera because it's really going to grow your podcast. Yeah. So let's move on to number three uh, to finish up this mock podcast episode. And let's talk about structure. What you're going to say in that first piece of your video. And first you want to start with a hook. And the hook is that you're going to present the problem. You're going to ask a question. Did you know that this and this, or have you been looking for the answer to this? It's something that is going to spark curiosity and it's going to grab that person's attention. I love that with spark curiosity, uh, something that people do all the time with podcast episodes that you can also do with the podcast YouTube video is you could grab a section of your interview or your episode that was particularly funny or interesting, just a little few seconds of that. And that can actually be your hook that you can edit at the beginning of your video. Some people call that a stinger. What follows after that is that you want to establish your authority. You want to share your credentials. You want to introduce yourself. So something that we do is that we say what the channel is about. And then we introduce ourselves. I'm, I'm Veronica and I am the social media branding and content strategies for the Pod Sound School. So that sentence right there that tells people you are in the right place if you're looking for this. And that's really important, um, especially on YouTube, because people have a shorter attention span than they do on the podcast players. So it's really important to hook them in and tell them right off the bat, this is who we are. This is what this channel is about. This is what you can expect from this video and make sure you stick around until the end so that you get this. So what we kind of uh, touched on a little bit is something in our PSS formula we call an audience retention statement. And that basically is just like, make sure you stick around until the end of this video where Veronica loses her temper and calls me an idiot. <laughs> so that's a really good thing to stick in there right at the first. And then the other thing is before you get into the meat and potatoes, before you get into the episode, make sure that you ask them to subscribe. Yeah. And you forgot one thing. 
tell your viewers what the video is about. That's very important and what oh, yeah. they're going to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like Steven said, then you introduce that audience retention and just make sure that you stick until the end because we share a tip that is going to change your life or something along those lines. Just to summarize, then you have the hook. You have that little sentence that tells them that sparks curiosity. Then you introduce yourself and your channel, and then you tell them what they're going to learn. And then you do the, you are your audience retention, uh, which is tell them what they should stick around until the end. And, and then you invite them to subscribe and like the video before you jump into the video. And then another thing you could really do that will help to grow your YouTube channel over time is to encourage engagement. So to say, make sure that you comment on this video. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I really want to get to know you. Uh, I will respond to all of your comments, those type of statements, because that will help your YouTube channel perform really well if YouTube sees that people are engaging with your videos. So now after we finish up this video interview here with Veronica, and we'll actually look at these files that we got from Riverside and we'll put them to the test and we'll see how high quality, I'm on a 4K camera here. Veronica's on a Logitech camera, 1080p camera on her side. So we can see how the video look and how you can pull that video into video editing software and get very creative to make really good videos. But there is so much that goes into making videos that are going to perform well on YouTube. It can seem really overwhelming. And if you're still hesitating or thinking about whether you should post your podcast on YouTube, we have this video right here also that will convince you to get your podcast on YouTube. And to follow our own advice, please comment on this channel. Let us know who's your favorite, Veronica or me. <laughs> One of us will definitely respond to your comments. So please comment here. We love helping our Podskis grow their podcasts. And with that, I think I'm gonna say goodbye to Veronica and we'll take a look at these videos. What we would do if this was the end of the episode here is I would say, and that's it. Thanks, Veronica. And she would say goodbye. And then I would press stop. Here you see it says we are uploading your video recording. Please keep this tab open. And then up here you can see how it says uploading local recording and it's at 75% on my end. And now I get a green thing that says your recording is uploaded. And Veronica should probably get that on her side too, right? Yeah. And so that's what you want to ask your guests. Can you please hang out until we see the green box that says your recording is uploaded? And then you're actually good to disconnect. So now we can actually say goodbye to Veronica on my end. End, you see it says end podcast. What does it say on your end? It says hang up. Oh, hang up. Okay. So mm -hmm. Veronica can just press hang up and we'll say goodbye to her and we'll take a look at where these recordings are at. Bye. Okay. There she hung up and she's gone. So now I can press end podcast here and it says you ended the podcast. You can refresh this page to rejoin the session. And that's great. So now I can go to back to my dashboard and I have all of my podcast projects here that Riverside saves for me on my account. So here interview with Veronica, I can click on this and I can say view recordings and here's all the recordings. And from the recordings, it's still processing the HD video. I imagine that could take a minute to process that, but that's really cool. Cool. The, you can retrieve MP3 backups if you want. And there's different ways that you can download these. You can download local separate track. So I'll get Veronica's audio, I'll get her video, and then I'll have my video and my audio all on a separate track, which is perfect for video and audio editing if you really want to prioritize the highest quality audio. But if you want something more like the composed video that a Zoom recording gives you, uh, you can choose this, which is composed internet recordings. And this will be much lower quality, but it will kind of mix the two videos together and make it so that it's just quick and easy for you to share your interview. So that's an option too. You can could also use that option to share on social media and stuff like that as well. I'm going to pop back in here once these are done processing and we'll pull these files into Adobe Premiere and we'll put them under a magnifying glass and put Riverside's technology to the test. Okay, so the audio and video have processed. So I'm just going to download the audio and the video. Okay, there we go. They have downloaded. So now let's pop over into Premiere and let's first take a look at the video files. I'm most excited to see those. So I can just say import here or I can even hop down to the finder. And from my finder, I can go to downloads and I have these two video files and I'll just drag these into Premiere here. Bloop. If you don't make the sound, it doesn't work properly. I'm gonna start with mine. I'm just gonna right click on it and actually say new sequence from clip. So my video comes with audio, but this already is looking pretty good. It's not looking like it was streamed over the internet. Let's make it nice and big. And actually I'm gonna make it full screen and let's just play through it and see what it looks like. And now the guest and the host both know that it's recording. 
So here we would be. So this is looking really good. Let's just scroll through it a little bit here. If you look at the resolution of this picture, that is very impressive. Let's take a look at Veronica's video. And now we're just taking a look, really get an idea of what Veronica's looks like. Would you look at that? I mean, that was basically just recorded straight from Veronica's computer. Now this was done with a Logitech camera, but this looks great. We've got a lot of color. But now what I can do is actually use the audio, this audio, you're gonna wanna use these wave files and drag those into whatever project that you're working in, whatever video editing software you're using in, and actually sync this audio up to the video to get even higher quality audio because the audio that comes with the video from Riverside is a little lower quality than the audio that actually comes with the isolated audio tracks that you can download. So that could be a little bit tricky, but it's really not that hard. You just have to match up the audio and then delete or mute the audio that came with the video track. So now I want to pop over into Reaper and I just got to get a look at these audio files, put them under a microscope and hear what they sound like. Just the audio because we're really going to also be using Riverside FM to record our podcast remotely. So we really want to make sure that the audio that's coming from Riverside is super high quality. And now I'm just going to drag our microphones, our voices in here. I'm going to put them on separate tracks. First, let's listen to Veronica's voice. I'm going to solo her and I want to take a look at the audio files too. One for your video and one for your podcast episode. So that's great. She's speaking through her Blue Yeti and I can't hear any internet interference there. That does not sound like it came over the internet. And that's because Riverside is recording it first on Veronica's computer and then uploading it. Way superior audio quality to a solution like Zoom or Skype or any of these free solutions that you can use when you're trying to connect remotely with your podcast co-host or your podcast guests. So my final takeaway with Riverside is that I am very impressed and I would definitely recommend it to you and anybody who's looking to record their podcast remotely, especially if you're looking to move your podcast to YouTube. And there you have it, Podskis. Pretty cool, right? Super simple, easy to use, easy to talk with your guests about things they can do to improve their audio and their video. And it's really amazing to me that we can get such high quality video now with our podcast. There's no excuse not to turn a camera around on yourself in your podcasting workflow and get your podcast up on YouTube. It will help your podcast grow. And if you wanna learn even more about how you can really make a great YouTube channel for your podcast, we have a free masterclass all about how you can get your first 100 subscribers, a lot of ideas specific to podcasters. You can grab your seat for that free masterclass by going to podsoundschool.com slash podcast on YouTube. Awesome. I hope you found that really helpful. Leave any comments or ideas you have in the comments below and either Veronica or I will respond to your comments. We love helping our pod skis grow their podcast and we will catch you on the next video.